Then Judah approached him and said, I beg your pardon, my Lord. Please let your servant say a word in my Lord's ear. And don't be angry with your servant, since you're like Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servant, saying, do you have a father or a brother? So we said to my Lord, we have a father who is old, a child born to him of his old age is young. Now his brother is dead, so he's the only one of his mother. They think Joseph's dead. So his brother is dead, so he's the only one of his mother's children left, and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, bring him down to me so I can look at him. But we said to my Lord, the boy cannot leave his father. If he were to leave his father, he would die. Then you said to your servants, unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you won't see my face again. Everybody read that last sentence with me. Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you won't see my face again. We should go back to that. Now, when we went up to your servant, my father, we told him my Lord's words. Then our father said, go back, buy us a little grain for food. So we said, we won't go down unless we have our youngest brother with us. Then we'll go down for we won't see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, you yourselves know that my wife bore me two sons. One went out from me, so I said he must have been torn to shreds and I haven't seen him since. And if you also take this one away from me before, before me and an accident happens to him, then you'll bring Bring my gray hair down to the evil of Sheol. Now, if I come to your servant, my father, he's talking to Joseph. Now, if I come to your servant, my father, and the boy isn't with us since his life is bound to his life, when he sees that the boy is no more, he'll die. Then your servants will bring the gray hair of your servant, our father, down to Sheol in grief. For your servant became pledge surety. I became Judah. Judah says, for your servant became pledged for the boy with my father saying, if you don't bring him, if I don't bring him back to you, I will bear the blame before my father all my days. So now please let your servant remain as my Lord's slave in the boy's place and let the boy go up with his brothers. For how can I go up to my father and the boy is not with me? Otherwise, else I must see the evil that would come upon my father. In other words, it's going to kill my dad. Look, Beth Messiah, we've talked about this before, but there is a holy hush right here where everybody can hear what God's trying to say. This is an analogy perfecto from the word of God. Joseph represents Yeshua. He's the savior of the family and, and, and Judah represents surety, standing in the gap. And Benjamin, the blood brother, represents Israel. And Yeshua is saying to the body of Messiah today, you, you want me to reveal myself? You want to see me again? You won't see me until you bring my Jewish people, my full blood brother Israel, I want them with you. I want my blood brother. You, you want to see me come back? You start praying and you start bringing my blood brother home. People, listen, this is a message today about three things. Surety. God is looking, heaven is asking today for surety. If, if I only got 10 people today to respond to this message, you say you're, you would be happy? Yes, I'd be happy with 10 people to respond to this message. I'd be happy for two that were serious about it. You say you're going to preach a message and just hoping to? I, I would that everybody got it. But you know what I'm asking for today? Heaven is asking for. We're taking applications today on who would be surety for Yeshua's blood brother, the Jewish people. Who would be surety? Who would be like Judah saying, you know what? <laughs> I'll, I'll put my life down on your altar for him. Tell me what you want me to do. Look, I'm asking you to be foot soldiers in the army of Adonai, and this is not an easy calling. In World War II, do you ever think about the fact that our soldiers went over there and they rescued 
people. They fought. They gave their lives. This is why we talk about the great generation. They gave their lives for somebody else's freedom. They were willing to die for somebody else's freedom. That's what they did. My, my uncle, I remember my uncle Bill, he came home. He was, a, he was an inf infantry man. And let's, let's, come on. We make something really big to do about the generals and the colonels, and that's good, and, and we should honor and respect them. But I'm telling you, the soldiers on the ground who did the fighting and went, my, my Uncle Bill was in the infantry under General Patton that marched all the way to Germany. And, and I'll never forget my grandma telling me he was never the same when he came home. He was never, never the same. I remember seeing Uncle Bill thinking, gosh, what's wrong with him? He, he wouldn't come out and fellowship. He'd answer a few questions. He was very awkward socially. My, my grandmother said he wasn't like that before he went, but, but the war did that to him. I'm, I'm asking for people in the, in the kingdom of God that would be foot soldiers who would do something that is going to be a battle all the way to make yourself surety to tell God, you know what, Father, for Zion's sake, I'll make myself surety. I'm going to ask you three, this application to be, this application from heaven only has three questions on it. Number one, would you be willing to pray the word of God over Zion? It, it's something that, that Zion, how many of you have heard Zion? I tell you, we got Zion Baptist Church and Zion this and Zion that. And, and the scriptures, the scriptures are clear that Zion, you, you know what Zion is? You know where it comes from? It's a little hill on the outskirts of Jerusalem. It's a little hill that has had more wars fought over it. Zion doesn't just stand for Jerusalem. It stands for all of the hopes and aspirations. It's the embodiment of the restoration and salvation of the Jewish people. That's why we say at Passover, La Shana Haba'ah, Jerusalem next year in Jerusalem. It's the heart of the Jewish people next year in Jerusalem. In, listen, about 300 years after David made Jerusalem the eternal capital of Israel. Everybody say the eternal capital of Israel. After he, about 300 years later, that's when you find Isaiah, Isaiah saying, for Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof goes forth is brightness and the salvation thereof is a lamp that burns for all Gentiles shall see your righteousness and all kings your glory and you shall be called by a new name which the mouth of Adonai shall name and you shall be a royal crown in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God and you'll no more be termed forsaken neither shall your land any more be termed desolate but you shall be called Hephzibah and your land beautiful Beulah, for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your young man marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem, who shall never hold their peace day nor night. You that make mention of the Lord, don't keep silent and don't give him any rest until he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in all the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength saying surely I'll no more give your corn to be food for your enemies and the sons of the strangers will no more drink the wine for which you have labored but they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord and they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness go through go through the gates prepare the way of the Lord cast up cast up the highway gather out the stones lift up a standard for the people the Lord has declared to the ends of the world say to the daughter of Zion behold your salvation your Yeshua, your salvation comes. His reward is with him and his work before him. And they shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Wow. That's just the, listen. 
three questions on your application. Would you be willing to just pray the word of God over? Turn toward Jerusalem and pray the word of God over as you say, Richard, listen, that's what you do with all the other prayers. You get something out of the word of God that pertains to your situation and you pray that word over your situation. That's what you do. That's what Yeshua did to fight the enemy. You, you listen, it's... Chapter 62 of, of Isaiah is not the only time things like that are written. Zion has begun to show up as the embodiment of all the hopes and aspirations of the Jewish people. It, it represents the full restoration and salvation of God's people. So, if you think, well, okay, I'll try to pray, but it, what's number two? Well, number two is from Ezekiel 36. Thus says Adonai Elohim, in the day that I pronounce you clean from all your iniquities, I will cause the cities to be inhabited and the ruins will be rebuilt. The land that was desolate will be tilled instead of being a wasteland in the sight of all that pass by. They will say, this land that was a wasteland has become like the Garden of Eden. The waste, desolate, and ruined cities are fortified and inhabited. Then the nations that are left all around you will know that I, Adonai, have rebuilt the ruined places and replanted what was desolate. I, Adonai, have spoken it, so I will do it. Thus says Adonai Elohim. Listen carefully. I will again be inquired of those of, of I will be I will again be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will populate them with a people like a flock. Everybody read that with me. Thus says Adonai Elohim. I will again be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will populate them with people like a flock. God is saying here. If you want him to, he'll put it in your heart to pray for Zion. He'll, he'll put it in you to inquire of him to do what he wants to do. It's the doggonest thing I've ever seen in the Word of God. God says, I will put it in your heart and it'll be a burning in you. You'll want to pray for the Jewish people. You'll want to pray for their salvation. Yeshua is saying, I want my blood brother. Let's finish this. Like, like the holy flock, like the flock of Jerusalem during her Moedim, her feast, her appointed time, so the waste cities will be filled with flocks of people. They will know that I am Adonai. Okay. Number one, would you be willing to pray the word of God over Israel? Well, you're like, yeah, I'm not... Okay, yeah, I, w I could be willing to do. Number two, would you seek God and ask him to put it in your heart to pray for Israel, to put in your heart to do what he already wants to do? The time to comfort Zion is now. Back in 1948, and I was two years old back then. I didn't get the proclamation. I didn't, but I was two years old when Israel became a nation again. And all the the pastors started rerouting their theology. They're like, oh my gosh, what has happened here? Israel is a nation again. So you, number one, you'll pray the word of God. Number two, will you ask God to fill you with the burden? Don't tell me God doesn't burden people. Listen, praying for the Jewish people to see Messiah, it's like an inf infantry man. I tr you trust me, it's not easy. It's unheralded. There's no glory in it. It's hard. And number three, and this, <laughs> this is equally important as all the rest. When Yeshua came near to the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began to rejoice. They praised God with a loud voice, for all the miracles they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of Adonai. Shalom in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees from the crowd said to him, Rabbi, teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Yeshua answering them said, I tell you that if these keep silent, the stones will shout out. As he drew near and saw Jerusalem, he wept over her, saying, 
if only you had recognized this day the things that lead to shalom, but now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you when your enemies will surround you with barricades and hem you in on all sides. And they will smash you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they won't leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. Listen, number three, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to let a friend of mine ask number three. The first question is, will you pray the word of God over Israel? The second one is, would you ask God to burden you to do this? And number three, I'm going to let a friend of mine, and I don't know if they're playing that from, from back there or if I'm doing it. Let's see. Uh, do I just keep pushing? No. Yes. Everybody. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, hear Yeshua cry. How I long to gather you to me. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Everybody sing it if you know it. For Zion's sake, I'll not hold my peace. For Zion's sake, for Yerushalayim, I will not rest. Set watchmen on your walls, O oh Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace. Day or night, or you who call upon the Lord, call upon.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Listen, so you got the third question from Marty Getz. He said, Yeshua wept over Jerusalem. He wept over Zion. And he asked the question, should we not be weeping too? If, it, if Yeshua's heart was broken over the condition of the Jewish people 2,000 years ago, and that was about seven, six to 700 years after Isaiah had given his Isaiah 62 for Zion's sake, Yeshua's still concerned about what happened a thousand years before with with really 1,500 years before Yeshua was here, with, with before Moshe, he, Yeshua is still concerned over Zion, over that little hill that's part of Jerusalem, and for the heart of the Jewish people, for the restoration. And the body of Messiah sometimes seems like they just don't get it. How, why is God concerned about the Jewish people? They rejected Yeshua. L listen, I just want to remind everybody, John and Peter and James, that's not what they were called on the earth. They were Yochanan, Shimon, Kepha, uh, Yaakov, Andre. Listen, listen to me. This is a Jewish book about a Jewish Messiah and a Messiah who died first for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And the first thousands and thousands of believers were South Texas Gentiles. No. They were Jewish men and women who had found Mashiach and were ready to give their lives up to preach the good news of their Messiah to the rest of the Jewish community. It ended up going out to the nations. And you know what these Jewish men that took the gospel out to the nations did? They would come back to Jerusalem and the Jewish elders in charge of the body of Messiah. You know what their reaction when they heard that God was saving Gentiles? It said they glorified God. And now, 2,000 years later, when God is doing a special thing and raising up Beth Messiahs and Messianic synagogues all over the world and trying to let Jewish people know, number one, you can believe in Yeshua the Messiah because he is a Messiah and you can stay Jewish after you become a believer. You don't have to become a Gentile. Oh, Lord God. Listen, people. This is the heart of Beth Messiah. We'll keep doing this as long as I'm alive and whoever comes after me, I'm praying that we keep, we keep that vision in front of the people because the body of Messiah for years, and I, and I don't say this, I don't mean this judgmentally. I'm just saying for years, you know what they've expected Jewish people to do if they become believers in their Jewish Messiah? They've expected them to throw out Passover, we've got Easter. Throw out Hanukkah, we've got Christmas. Throw out your Shabbat because we've moved it to the first day of the week. They, what they've done is they've told Jewish people, you can't be Jewish and believe in Yeshua. You, you've got to become like, listen, Beth Messiah, the time to do something is, is now. And, and I told you, this is a hard message. If I, get, if I got 10 people that would say, you know what, I get it. I'm going to be on my knees. If I got five, if I got two really fired up on their, it, I just want God to do a work in all of our hearts. Some of us, he's just sealing this. Look, I'm, I'm going to go past some scripture and I want to, I want to show you the last thing. 70 years ago, 80 years ago, when the Holocaust was happening on the earth. And, and it was a terrible day, the Shoah. It was a terrible day in Jewish history. And I say day, I mean a period of years. And, and there were some non-Jewish people that, that did something about it. Not enough. We wouldn't have lost 6 million Jewish people if enough had done it. But a, a lot of of non-Jewish people like Corey Ten Boom and her family and others did what they could. I want to show you a little clip of a man that that did something. He was, his, well, it'll show his name and everything. And I'm gonna I'm gonna flash by some scriptures to do it. 
because I got to get to it. Yeah, those are great scriptures. Sorry. Okay. Oh, that's a great scripture too. Oh, I missed it. Okay. Watch carefully. that's sobering listen if that man could do what he did can we do what we can do for Israel and for the Jewish people because the restoration of Zion the full restoration involves the salvation of the Jewish people it involves bringing Israel up before Yeshua their blood brother and it is going to happen I want to be part of it, and I want you to be part of it. Father, we just pray today. This has not been a message that is, has ministered necessarily to individual needs in this congregation. It's been a message where we've cast that vision out again before our people. Lord God, that you would move upon the hearts of Beth Messiah, both Jewish and non-Jewish people, that you would move upon our hearts and and call some of us call us to a place a deeper place of intercession where we would pray your word over israel where we would seek you to to put it in us to inquire of you what you already want to do to bring full restoration and lord that we would do it in such a manner and with such zeal that at some point, we would, just, we would be just like Yeshua. We would be weeping over Jerusalem, over Israel, over the shape of the Jewish people. Lord, that we would bring your will down out of heaven and get it done on earth just through intercession. Give us some infantry men and women that will be boots on the ground at your altar praying and seeking you for Israel's salvation. For Zion's sake, don't let us hold our peace. For Jerusalem's sake, don't let us rest until you've finished the whole redemption story in them. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen.